So uh, welcome everyone to the Brandon Select Board meeting for October 26th. I'll call the board to order. The agenda has been posted. Is there any uh, motion relative to the agenda as it has been posted? I move that we adopt the agenda. Motion, right. motion from Mr. Giles and a second from Mr. Wyman to adopt the agenda. Are there any changes that need to be made tonight? If not, uh, let's go ahead and vote on the agenda as it's presented. All in favor of the agenda as it was posted, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Unmute. What's that, Mr. DeGuyos? Doug was unmuting and then he's muted and he needs to be unmuted so we hear when he says aye or not. Okay. Can you unmute, Doug? I am unmuted. Can you hear me? Yes, yep, we can. Are you, are you in favor of the agenda or did you have any changes to be made? I love the agenda. I love the agenda. Okay, great. Okay, so the agenda is approved unanimously. Item two is the approval of the minutes of September 28th and or October 12th. What's the pleasure of the board on those? I can only vote on the, the October 12th minutes, sir. You, you're going to do the October 12th? Yeah, I can't do the, uh, I can't, oh, right. I have to for the September 28th. Yep, sure. So motion from Mr. Wyman to approve October 12th. Is there a second? I'll second. Thanks, Tim. Any errors or omissions in the October 12th minutes? I have the tiniest one, Charlene. I'm almost bashful to ask. On the first page before the call to order, you have Ms. Hopkins. But she wasn't here, and I'm not. I'm not identifying that way. <laughs> I'll call it a. Uh, any any real errors or omissions? There are no real errors or omissions. Any real ones? If not, all in favor of the omission of the uh, minutes with the minor tweaks, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Say aye. no. Thank you. The ayes have it. How about September 28th revision of the minutes? I'll make a motion to approve the revised minutes uh, of September 28th. Thanks, Doug. Is there a second? A second. Second from Tim. Uh, any further discussion? These have already been discussed once. Any further discussion about the minutes as they were revised? If not, all in favor of the minutes as revised say aye. 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 Thank you. Any opposed say no. The ayes have it. Unanimous. Okay. Item three is the town manager's report. Mr. Atherton, it's all yours. <clears throat> this is my report for the weeks of October 12th and October 19th. Uh, segment six, bridge slab. The steel beams for the frame have been installed. Cassell is now prepping the site to install the stand place forms that will be used for pouring the concrete slab. Uh, they're tentatively looking at pouring the slab on November 4th. Uh, Park Street, as you all know, paving is completed. Um, L&D, um, they're the folks that do our line striping, are, marked out new pavement last week, and they should start doing the uh, grinding for the recessed lines here this week, and they're hoping to be done by Friday, weather permitting. Uh, other happenings. Received the permit from VTrans for the south entrance at Estabrook Park to become permanent. If, I don't know if you all knew there was only a, a temporary permit that needed to be revised. Um, per the permit, we are required to widen the access and give and install a gate, which has to remain closed if there are no events. Um, so gates, a couple hundred bucks. We'll get our guys to install it and meet their criteria. So have that done. Um, just one other thing I can add that I just did when I came back for this evening was um, signed off on our submittal to FEMA for reimbursement for COVID. Um, we're at about probably 80% of our expenses. They're going to, well, 75% of our expenses, they're going to reimburse. So that's good. And the rest will probably be made up with the LGER grant through the state. So um, rec news. Uh, soccer season ended as of October 24th. Many thanks to the volunteer coaches that made the co-educational multi-age season, whatever that, what's that mean, Bill? <laughs> for our third, for sixth graders, a surprising success. Um, kickball started on Friday. The final movie of the season is Halloween Town being shown on Halloween. 
Uh, Spooksville with COVID considerations is October 30th at Estabrook. The Nestle Pie Gobbler Thanksgiving Fun Run will return next November. Um, we're not doing that this year. And uh, there has been some work on Seminary Hill Park. Uh, as you know, Bill had received a grant for that, so they've installed some new fence. And um, that's going along nice. The fence looks really good. So if you guys get a chance, go up and check it out. And that's all I have this evening. Thanks, Mr. Atherton. Are there questions for the town manager from the board tonight? Anything from Mr. Giles? No. Mr. Wyman? Nothing. Mr. Bailey? No. Nothing. No. No. Okay. Mr. Coolidge? No. Okay. Uh, I have no questions for Dave. Um, I have one related to something Dave said. So maybe, um, if you don't mind, Dave, me hijacking this moment of your report, could we ask Bill to talk some more about the seminary, Bill Moore to talk some more about the Seminary Hill Park work, what's being done up there, and or if he's able to talk about um, whether or not that relates to the dog park plans. Can you hear me? Just barely. Okay, hold on. let me get, can you hear me now? Yes. Is that better? Okay. So yes, the, um, Gonna mute my other phone here. Hold on a second. Sorry about the technology issues here. All right. Okay. No echoes. So uh, I want to read to you guys an email I sent in response to somebody asking about our dog park or the potential for dog park, and this kind of covers mostly uh, everything. And if anyone has any other questions, give me give me a call. <coughs> somebody. Somebody sent an email to me yesterday opposing uh, opposing our dog park. So <clears throat> I, uh, I appreciated uh, their voicing their, their opposition to the placement of the dog park adjacent to Seminary Hill Park. The land on which the vast majority of the recycled fencing will be put is owned by a private landowner who endorsed the idea of using the limited funds for a private public partnership on a test run of a walkable dog park. The dog park will have two double-gated dog person accesses on the south side and the east side of the fenced-in area. There'll be a locked six-foot utility access on the side that is closest to the playground for mowing purposes that will not be a public access. There'll be multiple dog waste receptacles, signage reminding folks of the rules of these entrances that, again, are not on the playground side of the park. Seminary Hill Park, the portion that is owned by the town of Brandon, is a multi-use, multi-age park that has playground structure and a basketball pickleball court. All of our town parks should look to serve people of all ages. The town was happy to work with Mr. Briscoe, who is the owner of the majority of that land, uh, which is now being fenced in by our folks at Carpenter Costin who are doing work adjacent to some grant work that we were able to get. Um, the town was happy to work with Mr. Briscoe to allow his land to serve other types of people in our town, people who have dogs. Uh, let's see. So uh, upon, uh, I had considered this project and there was a lot of enthusiasm around the dog park people. However, they were only able to raise somewhere in the neighborhood of about $3,000 toward the end of creating a dog park down at Estabrook Park. This was an opportunity to sort of see to fruition some of what they had worked toward and creating an opportunity for a dog to have a, a place to play. Uh, and for us, I mean, it made sense, at least me as a rec director, I made the decision this made sense. Uh, I went in this direction because it meets the most amount <coughs> of needs. One is the cleaning up and delineation of the property line at the park. Again, we do not own the upper portion of the park. The line is around where the new split rail fence ends. Using funds collected to make this dog park, this serves as a low cost proof of concept for the donated funds and with the proximity acts as matching funds toward the grant we received to improve the fencing and create a parking area on the town owned portion. And this also saves the area and gives us a delineation area of where we could possibly add more playground structure, including the donated structure for McDonald's. So, uh, and I, I ask people to please keep in mind that if the dog park proves to be problematic, we have the option of terminating our agreement with the landowner and the experiment can be ended. However, my hope is that the majority of our townspeople who love their dogs enough to hump it down to a park in the middle of town will prove to welcome the privilege of having a community asset that many other towns enjoy and do it in a respectful and responsible manner. Um, that is my letter I sent out to uh, somebody in opposition. I see this stuff has 
kind of blown up on front porch forum. It's not so good to be front porch forum, uh, you know, famous, but people have, uh, you know, expressed opinions on either side of their coin. And you know, I think uh, this is why you guys pay me the big bucks and make decisions like this and take the egg on my face if, uh, if it's something that proves not to be successful or it does. But I believe it can. And we live in a community of, uh, of, of good people. People already walk their dogs up there. I don't think we're creating an attractive nuisance by working with a private landowner to fence in his part of the park. Again, providing a delineation line between what we own for the park that we've maintained for years and years without an agreement and to clean, you know, to clean some of that up. Because a lot of people seem to think that we own the entirety of the park, which we do not. Thank you for, sure. that's great. Oh, sorry, Th sorry, go ahead, Tim. I didn't hear what you said. I'll say thank you for um, your thoughtful response. I appreciate um, your report. Yeah, uh, I agree. And Bill, thank you for clarifying it for me, what's going on. Would you be able to post that onto the Front Porch Forum? Because there's there's that discussion that's kind of started today, I guess, or yeah. maybe started yesterday, but got going in earnest today. Maybe they'd be best to hear it from the horse's mouth, so to speak. Yeah. And I think Charlene might be looking for it. Can you can you get the text that you just read us to Charlene for the minutes? I, I just need to edit it down from the per, you know like this was a perfect email I sent to a to a tax I just want to make sure I edit it down so where it's not you know relaying personal information, but it's <coughs> official I guess press release. Yeah, so I will get that to you absolutely, Charlene. Thank you, Bill. Are there any questions for Bill or comments? Yeah, Dave. Shouldn't um, we be having folks respond in a select board meeting instead of us getting involved with Front Porch Forum? I, I don't see it as, you know, being involved in Front Porch Forum inappropriately. I think that it's never a bad idea when the town is going to make a change like establishing a dog park. I don't think it's a bad idea to let people know in as many venues as we can. If others disagree, we can, we can decide not to. Okay, so that's a uh, that, that's helpful for the clarification. Are there questions from the public for the town manager? We didn't get to that part. Any Anybody here tonight on the Zoom call with a question for Mr. Athens? Well, I have a question, but I'd first like to touch base about the dog park. I want to show our support for the dog park at in town here. I think it's a really good um, urban planning move on our part, just because of the individuals renting different apartments don't necessarily have property for their dogs. So I'd like to publicly say that we support it, and this is Sherry Beckerla. Thank you, Sherry. It's a great point. Yeah, I think we've talked in many instances about a walkable and kind of full service, vibrant downtown. And as Bill says, this is not you know etched in concrete; it's it's etched in chain link or whatever. And if it doesn't work out, we can talk about why and where a better place might be. But if it does work out, then I think we've got another village amenity that will be attractive uh, to folks. Other questions or comments for the town manager? Okay, if not, we'll go ahead along. Oh, yeah, Sherry, I'm, go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> so I just have one general question. I know that the construction on the gas station started as far as the demolition goes, but is there an overlying like schedule for when the new structure is going to be built? I'll ask Mr. Atherton to respond. Sherry, unfortunately, I don't have any information for that. As this isn't our project, so I know they were looking at getting the canopy done this spring and hopefully doing some foundation work, but I, I would say best to probably contact Dan Dukeshire at Midway Oil. He, I'm sure he, he's very easy to talk to, and um, he could give you all the information you wanted. Great, thank you very much. Sure. If you need his number, let me know. I've got it here. Actually, I'll just email it to you. How's that sound? That sounds wonderful. Great, thank you. Sure. Um, Dave, this is Brent Bueller uh, with a follow-up on that. And this might be for the zoning administrator, but how long is a permit allowed to be open on something like that? This is a four and a half year old permit. So no. how, how many years can this drag on? It's actually not. They renewed the permit um, just under two years ago. Yeah. As long as, as long as they show substantial completion based on a monetary value, not on the structure value uh -huh. of, I believe it's 40%, they're, okay. they're fine. So 
Um, I've talked to Midway about this a couple of times and with their engineering costs and their, the canopy work and the demolition, they're, they're right there around the 40%. I don't have a, a definite number. That would be something that Jeff could certainly follow up with, but, um, yeah, okay, they're, great. they're there. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Good question. Good answer. Other questions for the town manager? Okay, let's let's go along. Uh, item four is then public comment and participation. This is not necessarily directed to the town manager, but anything you want to bring up that's not on the agenda tonight, start with the select board. Uh, Mr. Coolidge, anything? No, nope. nope. Mr. Bailey. No, I have nothing new. Mr. Wyman. Nothing. Mr. Giles. Nothing to me. Okay, I have nothing tonight. Other folks uh, on the Zoom call tonight, any members of the public with a topic that they uh, would like to ask about or talk about? Um, yes, this is Brent again. Um, I wanted to thank Tim for his uh, Brandon Carbon Footprint Report. I, I printed it off, it was on online, so um, I was able to look at it. I thought it was real timely given the uh, discussion of wastewater upgrades in that. I know that there wasn't a discussion about how that'll affect this, but, uh, and then also the fact that the new uh, equipment garage came online. And th those were two areas that seem to be, have a trend upwards as far as uh, CO2 emissions. So it'll be, we can certainly see how the new um, equipment highway garage does on this report and, and then maybe ask how, how the efficiency of the wastewater will improve given those upgrades maybe. So thank you, Tim, for the report. Appreciate it. You're welcome, Brent. I second the thanks for the report. I did wanna maybe just ask Mr. Atherton to clarify. I don't believe there are any uh, energy uses expected with the new structure at the highway. Am I correct? That's a cold storage situation? You're, Dave, you're, you're not uh, heard right now. Um, yeah, that's just a cold storage thing to get all of the equipment that was sitting outside under a roof and to take that old lean-to down that was not insurable anymore. So um, we'd love to do something to the other structure. So <laughs> okay. we're open for ideas. Actually, we're talking about it today that, I mean, it's just we might as well take the roof off it when we're heating it because it's, it's old and it's not holding anything. So. It's it's over long overdue. Um, I might just take an opportunity to jump in and say I would love to talk with you about what we can do with the roof if if we can be a helpful from the select board. Um, yeah, the the one issue with that building, Tim, is not only is I mean it's an old it's an old tin structure. The sills are rotted on it. You know the there's it's it needs a revamp. If you go down there sometime and look around, it's it's yeah the new the new structure we just put up with. No electricity or anything, and it is much nicer than what we have for a regular garage. So, yeah. yeah thanks. Okay, thank you. Other uh, members of the public tonight with questions or comments? There's always public comment available on any item on the agenda. Item five, Zoom meeting best practices discussion. Is this something Mr. Giles uh, would like to introduce? Yeah, I'd be glad to. So, um, it looks like, um, I'm sorry to say in some ways, well, in every way, that um, we're gonna be Zooming for quite a long time. Um, the uh, COVID seems like it's gonna be around for another year, um, you know, with the likelihood that we're gonna be wearing masks and doing these kind of remote meetings. Um, and so with that in mind, I um, talked with you, Seth, a little bit individually and, um, and thought about, you know, Zoom practices um, because, uh, we are not alone in having to run large parts of our life with Zoom. And so it didn't take me long to stumble onto a couple of articles. And I thought instead of, um, you know, loading you down with sending you the whole articles, I would just summarize them. And so there were just four kind of points that they mentioned. And they're things we mostly already do. Um, you know, one is don't be late. Um, one is turn on the camera. <laughs> and I must say, Brian, is your camera working? Because it'd be great to be able to see you. Um, one of the points that they make in the Zoom best practices is it feels... I'm sorry, Tim, I don't want to interrupt you, but yeah, so uh, so we ran into a little bit of a technical snap, but we had everything working with us with a second laptop, 
Yeah. And come to find out the laptop. So that's a that's a third laptop that's in there, but the camera doesn't seem to be functioning, but it definitely be functioning. Well, thanks. I appreciate that. Because obviously there are exceptions and um and sure, you know. Um, but what I was just saying with the um, the best practices is that when we do have um, a camera, it helps to give the sense of um, attention to the meeting and in, um, a respect for the process. And so, um, ironically, one of the points that they make in all of the articles that I read is it says, "Good, get good at interrupting," which is this kind of you know subtle hand motion or um, in some way. Sometimes when you take out, come off of mute, um, it's a way of showing you're about to say something. And so we all will get you know better and more fluid at um, managing conversations in a in a good way. Um, and then of course number four and then my last point on here is this: just try not to multitask. Um, it's it's tempting to get our screens full of things and to be doing lots of things, and yet um, ultimately the people in the meeting who are with us perceive our lack of attention, and it can sometimes diminish this um, the integrity of our meetings. Um, and, and the last point that I made to the select board members, which I see we've done tonight, is just the helpfulness of having each person have a computer. So um, if there are side conversations, we all can participate in them. Because um, even when we had in-person meetings, it's, um, it's helpful to feel like we're all getting the same information and, um, and being able to participate um, in a good way. And so nothing earth shaking, um, just kind of recognizing we're gonna be Zooming for a while. And so I, um, I wanted to um, to share this. Thank you, Tim. I think that's timely. Um, I think that you're right. The, um, <clears throat> the idea of Zooming has taken some getting used to, but it does seem to be the prudent thing to do uh, to, to meet. I, I think the state, Dave has told us, the state has told, you know, state staff to meet remotely when they can and uh, only in person when they have to kind of thing. And I guess right now we're, we're on the same page with that. We're meeting remotely because we can. And there may be a time where we need to meet face-to-face, uh, -face, like maybe we have to make a site visit or something like that for some of the various things the select board does. And if that's the case, we'll do that safely and so forth. Um, but we should be taking best advantage of this technology that's available. And I, I think we are. And I think that with the tips that or the best practices that you presented tonight, I think that will assist us in, in doing that the best way we can. Are there other comments or any questions about uh, what, what Tim's reported? Uh, Butch Shaw, Representative Butch Shaw is on the call. Uh, thank you, Seth. Uh, and, and thank you, Tim, for that overview of Zoom. Uh, I've been able to participate in well over 500 Zoom meetings since March and uh, had a lot of uh, feedback and a lot of uh, talk. But the one thing that's important to remember, especially when you're in your home, uh, you're inviting people into your home so the background is very, very important uh, of what people are looking at uh, within, uh, within your home. So that's something to be thinking about when you, uh, when you log on and you, turn, and you turn the camera on and allow people into your home. So you need to be careful with that a little bit and, and be polite. And, 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 and Tim, you mentioned uh, uh, stay, stay focused uh, on, the, on the Zoom screen, which sometimes is hard. Uh, because there's other opportunities to look at other devices or maybe communicate with another board member or other members of your committee or, or whatever via other means. So it, it gets a little tempting to uh, be uh, uh, Zoom tired or, or however they want to call it today. But it's a, it, it is, it's, it's something that's, that's in our life. It's going to be apparently in our life for quite a while. The legislature has yet to determine uh, whether we're going to meet in person or not. So we're still, uh, the folks that are reelected in November will probably learn more about that the week after the elections, but uh, that's kind of where we are now. But just, just remember, you are inviting people into your home when you're doing this. Thank, uh, thank you, Seth. That's a great point. Thank you, Butch, for that. Anyone else with any comments or thoughts on Zoom? Okay, if not, let's go along. We have the Municipal Roads Grants and Aid Program, and uh, we'll let Mr. Atherton tell us all about this, I think. So this is uh, the, the program that allows us to get funding to do stone line ditching and other 
types of drainage uh, jobs on our on our roads that's in connection with the Lake Champlain TDML program. So to prevent phosphorus fuels or phosphorus going into you know the river and um, we did a few a couple of years ago on like Birch Hill and some other ones. Um, so we're we're up for some funding again. The state's got sixteen thousand four hundred dollars to give us, um, and we've got to spend a little bit on that, you know, to match it. It's a twenty percent match, so the total is twenty thousand five hundred dollars. Um, I just did get an email this evening that they've kicked this out a little bit further, but um, it'd be good for us to get this in here and and get on the list of the funding. We don't have to. Um, name a project yet, which is kind of odd for this one. So um, once we get the approval, then we can move forward. Then we have to tell the state what we did with it. So it's a good program. We've done it a few times before and um, any assistance we can get and we're doing our ditch work is helpful. So this is just, uh, we need the boards, the signature from the boards, a letter intent to participate in the municipal road grants and aid program, which is attached on the second page. What's the pleasure of the board on this? Uh, I just I got a question for Dave and then I'd still like to make a motion on it. Um, do we plan on doing this in house, Dave? Oh yeah, yeah. Good. Now I'd make a motion that uh, we go forward with the grant. Second. Motion then a second to proceed uh, with the grant municipal road grants and aid program as it's outlined in the letter and as Mr. Atherton described it. Any discussion on this? Seems like a good opportunity and, and we've taken advantage of it before. All in favor then say aye. 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 Any opposed say no. The ayes have it, it's unanimous. Thanks That's Dave a, for doing that. One more yeah. thing I want yeah. to add on that. There is an inventory that we did with through the regional planning and the state a few years back on where our needs were for this. And that's what these projects are based on. And obviously we'll tick off the ones that need the most work, you know, and trickle down to the ones that need the least. So, and that, if you guys want to look, it's on, you can go to the state's website um, and it'll, it'll show you everything on it and the miles and the roads and everything. So it's, it's a good thing to, to take a look at. So you're saying the project list has already sort of been identified? It's yeah, not they've done it. Pretty yeah. much every town has it. So it's really helpful. Great. Thank you. Item seven, consider the sale of swamp lots. Again, Mr. Atherton, the town's agent for such affairs. So way back, I don't know, a few months ago, we had Fish and Wildlife come to one of our meetings, attend one of our meetings um, about acquiring a couple swamp lots. Um, I did receive an email um, last week from them asking if we were still interested in selling these lots. Um, I did let them know that we have a policy in place that um, we would have to follow. And as I, you know, I've kind of, you know, got a little review of it here. Um, I did give you gentlemen the uh, lister cards and the deeds into the town for these lots. Um, they did give an offer, but as you know, it's a sealed bid process. So, uh, um, I let them know that I would bring this to the board to see if the board so chooses to sell these lots and set a minimum bid amount and a deadline to accept bids and we can move forward with the process. Great. Thank you. And I want to thank you for, um, letting whoever the interested party is, uh, I wanted to thank you for letting them know about the town's asset policy. So what's the pleasure of the board regarding a minimum and or any other thing? Yeah, Mr. Giles, go ahead. Um, I have a question about, um, are there any back taxes due on these lots? No, we've owned these, one of them we've owned for, I don't know, I attached the deeds here, let's see, one we've owned since, uh, Nineteen forty-six, <laughs> and the other one we've owned since nineteen thirty-nine. So um, we have not received taxes on those properties since then because they're owned by the town. And, and the other question I had is: um, back when I um, first contacted, um, you know, people at, at the um, Fish and Wildlife um, to talk about swampland, 
Um, I thought there were four lots that are, are um, town owned. Um, are these all the lots that are town owned at this point in the swamp? Um, these are the only two that were um, brought to my attention that they wanted to acquire. Oh, okay. There's another lot that's an unknown lot, but that's not ours. So that would have to go through a whole different process. Um, that wouldn't have anything to do with us. So. I'm wondering, um, one of the, yeah. I'm sorry, go ahead. I was gonna say if on the map that Dave provided, um, you can see there's another town owned lot a um, little bit south and west. There's a 25 acre. Right. Yeah, I'm, I'm just wondering, um, one of the things we, we talked about um, when we talked about the land policy last time is the possibility of putting um, uh, more properties up for sale all at once to just kind of simplify the whole process. Hey, um, and I'm not sure if that's a good idea now. I'm just wondering if you've considered whether or not to just say, you know, all the town lots are for sale on a, on this bid process or something like that. Um, I haven't done anything with it, Tim. So um, hadn't really thought about it until the offer came in. And just for clarification, that other lot that shows there, the 6-1-47, that was one that was actually sold after April 1st to, oh, I believe, um, the Delphi is on that one now. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, that's not ours anymore. Um, thanks. thanks for that, Dave. Yep. Um, so, yeah, you know, just this offer was made and I sent them the information on what we need to do to move forward with it. So um, it's in the board's hands, I guess. Great. Okay, so Dave's asked about whether we want to set a minimum bid and or a deadline. Um, for this, well, well, first Dave has asked whether we want to in fact sell these lots. And if so, whether we want to set a minimum bid and a deadline, what's the pleasure of the board? I'd make a motion to yes, sell those two lots with a minimum bid of $100 each and um, a deadline of our next select board meeting. You only wanna do the bids for, you want sealed bids within two weeks, Tracy? I have to put in the paper, so. okay. Well, do it. Do it the the the, the board meeting after or the second board meeting. Can I make a suggestion? Absolutely. When we do, when we usually do notices for any of our, like our sealed bids for projects or anything, it's usually three weeks to four weeks out. Um, right. I, just just an FYI on that. That you know, I think it would give more opportunity for folks to bid. Okay. Put it. Uh, what two? Not the next select board, but the following board meeting. Sure. That is... 23rd of November. Yeah. Yeah, November 23rd. Okay. So the motion uh, is, if uh, I'll restate it, but Tracy can correct me if I'm stating it wrong is yes uh, to sell the two lots in question with a minimum bid of $100 for each lot and a deadline for bids to be received by the select board meeting of November 23rd. And we would we, we would award it, we'd be able to award it the 23rd, right, Dave? Uh, depends on how you guys want to open bids. If you want to do it at the meeting or if you want me to do it the Friday to, before, however you guys so choose with that. Um, I mean, all the bid results will come to you guys. So it's up to you. If you want to open them in the meeting, we can do that too. All right, I'm, we're, wherever, but I think I think it should be awarded whether Dave opens them Friday or we open them at the meeting. I think we should be able to award it at that particular meeting. Dave, do you care whether it's Friday or Monday uh, that they get opened? I don't, I don't have any preference. I don't no. see that it makes much difference. Again, just our, our, our practices, I know it's different. This is the first one we're doing with land, but we usually open, for some reason, we pick two o'clock on Friday afternoons to open bids. Um, it's just, you know, what, but it doesn't matter. This is completely different. So however, however you want to do it. Why don't, why don't we, uh, or I would suggest that uh, we use that practice and that the town manager uh, open the bids on the Friday preceding the uh, November 23rd select board meeting and bring us the results. Yeah, Tim, go ahead. Uh, well, I was had a follow-up question after you finished that train of thought with minimum bid. 
Yeah, that was the end of my train of thought. <laughs> okay. So the, the um, property that was sold, um, did you did you say to the Adelphi um, family? Is that what you said, or the Adelphi group? Adelphi, the Adelphias, yeah, they they live they live in Leicester. They've bought quite a few swamp plots. I'm pretty sure that one was sold to them a while back. There was that. I was going to say you, you made it sound like it was this year. I don't recall that coming up before the board. Um, and, and I'm um, sure it would have had to. You guys would have had to approve. Yeah. It or, let me let me look. I, I don't remember the date offhand, Tim. I can look right now. Okay, thanks. Because I mean, I would think that would help us uh, get a sense of what. Uh, they pay for it, and then what might be a reasonable minimum bid for these other properties is what I'm maybe, thinking. Maybe I can tell you right now. I might have to pull a file. Well, he's doing that. Um, I'll just say something that I think is right, and Dave can correct me if it's wrong, that when the bids come in to the town office by November 20th then, and Dave opens them and reports to the select board the results of that process on Monday the 23rd. That's not, we can award the bid uh, or we can award the sale to the high bid or whatever we choose there, but that's not gonna actually transfer the land, right, Dave? We're still gonna go through the whole noticing process. You have some number that you always say, right? There's some- Right, you have to, so we still have to do by, by statute the 1061 notice. Right. Um, and that has to run in the paper. That has to be at least 30 days. So. Just so we're all clear, right? We can award a bid that night, but that's just going to start that process that the statute requires. Right. Um, yeah, give me a couple minutes here, Tim. I thought I had that one in my... in my. Say the truth, it doesn't have to slow us down. Um, I, maybe if I could get it sometime tomorrow or the next day from you. I can well if you if I can leave the screen for a second, it's right in my filing cabinet here. So sure. um, bear with me one second. I'll just put myself on mute so I'm not making a lot of noise. Anybody with any announcements to make during this brief lull? I will announce that uh, Per our usual practice, we're going to get through item uh, with a fiscal item in the public session of the select board meeting, and then we're going to have a liquor control commissioners meeting, and then we're going to have a sewer commissioners meeting, and then we're going to come back as the select board for the executive session that's warned on the agenda. That's just a process announcement. I neglected to say that earlier. Would you like me to come back to this if you guys want to move forward? They've purchased like six lots from us. So I just I want to go through and make sure I have the right one. Is it going to influence what we uh, adopt on this motion with the minimum bid? Um, no, I, I'm okay with that. Um, I, okay. I in the information later, Dave. Thanks. Okay. I, I don't want to rush it. Um, there's no reason to rush it. We can go back to it. If you want to take it, like we want to go through the agenda a little further and then uh, come back to this. Yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> Is that is that is there any objection on the board to uh, leaving item number seven for the moment while Dave does a little bit of research and coming back to it? That, I, I yes, Charlene. Second to the the motion. There, there was not yet, in fact, a second. Is there a second? A second. There's a second from Brian Coolidge. All right. So uh, if there's no objection, let's leave that for now and come back to it. And item. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Our next problem is that uh, I think agenda item eight, we're going to have to have the town manager involved in that also. <laughs> Unless you want to go with a, well, to nine. To, nine. Let's nine. All right, let's do item nine. I just found it, guys. All right. right up the last minute. So we sold this back in, I got the purchase and sale here. Actually, it was two years ago. So it was uh, the offer was accepted by um, on 11. Let's see, when the board accepted it, December 18th, 2018. So this one was, yeah, you weren't even on the board then, Tim. So it was two years ago. So they actually purchased two lots. The, 20, the, the uh, 6147, and then there's a 6147.1. And it looks like we accepted $1,500 for those total. For total for both of them? Yeah. Okay, thanks. Does that um, 
That answers my question. Yeah. It answers your question. Does it make you want any change on the minimum bid? I think for this particular set of lots, no, I don't have a change. Okay. Is there discussion on the motion to yes, sell the lots at a, the two lots in question at a minimum bid of $100 for each lot with a deadline of getting the bids to the town manager by 2 p.m. on Friday, 20th of November to be reported to the select board on Monday, the 23rd of November. Any discussion on any of that? Doug Bailey. Uh, just double checking, Tracy, was it a was it $100 per lot or $100 per acre? And then secondly, Seth, does our policy state that uh, the buyer pay closing costs? I believe uh, Tracy's $100 per lot, Doug. $100 a lot. And the policy does say that the buyer pays um, the legal expenses. Right, Dave? I don't have the full policy in front of me right now. That's my recollection. I, I don't think the policy states it, but I think that's the expectation. Um, I think that's... Um... <clears throat> I believe when this was discussed that the closing costs were going to be set in the bid. So if the board chose to have the the buyers pay the closing costs that needed to be put in the bid. You guys put anything so, you want. So if we desire to to have the buyer pay the closing costs, we ought to have an amendment to that motion saying that we're going to ask for that. Doug Bailey. I would like to make that as a motion that there be a, a minimum bid of $100 plus the closing costs that the town would incur. Okay. You're muted, Seth. An amendment has been, thank you. An amendment's been moved to, um, to add that the buyer will be responsible when they submit the bid. Uh, they'll be they'll be advised that they will be responsible if they are the winning bidder for paying the town's closing costs on these lots. Is there okay. a discussion? And there's a second. Is there been any discussion on that amendment? Doug Bailey. Yeah, one more time. Sorry, just wondering. If closing costs and it also include the posting that we have to do in our town newspaper and pay for. I just don't want to lose money on selling these for a hundred dollars. You guys can, Dave. You can put in. Sorry, you can put in whatever you want in it. Just put any cost incurred by the, incurred by the town. I agree to what Tracy just said. I, I guess for the sake of discussion, it's interesting to realize that if someone, well, actually, this is a question rather than an observation. Supposing somebody puts in a very low bid um, that doesn't cover the cost, can we refuse the bid? Or is the assumption that once we've made this process that we have to accept um, whatever bid comes in? Because I, I guess, I'm sorry, go ahead. You can refuse any bid. The select board can refuse any bid they want. Because I, I think the reason I'm, I'm leading up to this is um, I appreciate Tracy's um, you know, minimum bid. I think it makes sense to have a minimum bid. Um, it, it seems likely that we're going to get more than that. And if we get a, a, a lot more than that, then a, a lot of these questions become moot um, because um, then it isn't a question of losing money. It's just a question of us doing what normal sellers would do, which is pay for our own advertising and then expecting the, the buyer to pay for the closing costs. Um, and and so I, I think that we may be protected by just being able to refuse a bit if it's too small. I don't feel great about setting a minimum bid so low that it would result in a bid that we would refuse only because it is too low. Yeah, I would agree. Doug Bailey had... Do we have a, a decent estimate as to what our closing costs would be? I know we have to post each one of those lots 
in the reporter for a time frame, and then we have to have a deed prepared. Um, so we should be able to estimate what those closing costs are in advance so that we're, we're not caught losing money on this. I think that the spirit of the motion and the amendment as it's been discussed has been this. And tell me if you disagree. I think the spirit of the motion is the minimum bid for the lot is $100. And to use other words, net to the town is $100. In other words, all the expenses that come after that, that the town has to do statutorily or to comply with our own policy, the buyer's paying. Correct. So, so I believe it's impossible to lose money by accepting any of the bids and that the minimum amount the town would realize from the sale of the lot would be $100. Correct. Does that sound all right, Doug? I mean, I, I think we cannot lose money if we, if we advertise the sale of the lot in such a way that the buyer is responsible for all of the town's legal and advertising and closing costs. Yes, I agree with that. I know we had this discussion when we had someone making a bid on a lot that was exceedingly low. And when we were looking at it, the closing, you know, our advertising and closing costs, we were going to lose money. And then we walked away from that um, buyer and it, and it created some hard will. And I, I believe that our policy did state that closing costs would be included in the purchase price. Dave. Um, like I said before, you guys can put anything you want in your bid docs. Who pays what? Who pays the postage on the envelope? I'm wondering if it might be in the best interest of the select board to determine a price per acre on any of these swamp plots. Then moving forward, all we have to do is the math to figure out how much you guys want to minimum bid a swamp lot for, whether it's $10 an acre, $50 an acre, $100 an acre. That's, I think it's easy to figure out that way. Um, to arrive at a minimum bid. Dave, you know um, typical closing costs. Um, do you have some idea what the closing costs are for um, plots? Well, I, I have this file next to me of some, but I think most of those ones we paid outside of closing. So I don't have it on the on a settlement statement. I'm thinking it's like 500 bucks, I think somewhere around there. Um, I guess I could look at the one we just did for Den. I think it's like $500 right around there, though. Yeah. Um, yeah, all, two at a time or something? All they would do for us to hear is, you know, do the property transfer tax return and prepare the deed. So it's not like there's a lot to it for us as a seller. So at the moment, there's a motion, there's an amendment still, I think, right, Charlene? We haven't voted on the amendment. The amendment was that when we advertise these lots for sale, that the buyers will be made aware that they have to pay the town's costs associated with disposing of the lot. We can leave it at that, Tim. Well, um, Dave's suggestion was a good one. And so supposing we um, hear that number that Dave just gave us, which is about $500 closing costs, and we take that seven acre lot that's for sale that would mean the minimum price per acre on the lot would be $70 per acre or 70, you know, one or $2 an acre. Um, and for the 10 acre lot, um, you know, the minimum amount would be $50 an acre. Um, and, and so maybe if we chose, you know, $70 an acre as a minimum bid, um, that might be the way to be sure to cover our closing costs. And it would simplify the bid process because I'm trying to be aware of what it would feel like if I were bidding on something. I mean, you know, if, if we go with the $100 minimum bid, the idea is I could just bid $100, but then I wouldn't know about the closing costs and that might be a big surprise if I, if I had to, um, if, if my $100 bid turned into a $600 bid. And so I, I guess I'm, I'm thinking it might be clearer to the buyer to just say the minimum bid is $70 an acre and, um, and then that will cover the closing costs. Does that make sense at all? It does, but it, it does. But the other way is still telling you that uh, when you when you post a bid, 
you're posting a bid in there and you're going to have all this written in it. So, um, you, if, if you're a buyer and you, and you can't, you're, you're still going to know that you have to pay the closing cost. Okay. Yeah. I'm good with that. But I don't, I don't, I'm not, I don't have a problem with a, with a minimum bid per acre either. I just, I just think you're going to set on the lot, but maybe not. So, <clears throat> there's an active amendment. Any more discussion, or do you want to vote on the amendment? If there's no discussion further, let's vote on the amendment. The amendment, uh, Charlene, do you want to read it back to us, what we have, so that uh, it's not my words? Mine's a draft here. So, a motion by Doug Bailey, Tracy Wyman, to amend the original motion to include, let's see, to pay the town's, uh, oh, wait a minute. Um, well, basically, we for the bid to the minimum bid of a hundred to include um, plus the closing costs and other costs incurred by the town. Would that cover the yeah. advertising? Yeah. I'm hearing yeses and seeing nodding heads. So. I don't know, D Dave has had a career in this field. Is there a term of art that we could use like uh, cost of conveyance or something like that? Is there some kind of catch all phrase? I think if we just put in a buyer needs to, to assume all closing costs would probably cover it. Okay. Oh, you, I mean, want to, you want to be able to close it, cover the cost of the advertising too. They're gonna, they're going to know anyway before, you know, they come to closing with a settlement statement on what it's going to cost. So um, you guys tell me what you want them to cover. You want advertising in there too? Yes. Yeah. Okay. About to include all costs incurred by the town for the purchase. Think, there you go. I think that's really the spirit of what the board's discussion has been. Yes. So you've heard the amendment as uh, related, related by Charlene to include uh, the buyer will be advised that their bid will be plus costs incurred by the town to conclude the sale. Is there any further discussion on the amendment? If not, all in favor of the amendment say aye. 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 Any opposed say no, that was unanimous. So now we have the main motion. I'll again ask Charlene if she can get it to us. Okay, so in that I included the parcel lot. I'm assuming you want that in there or not? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so motion by Tracy Wyman, Brian Coolidge. Okay. Huh. I play with these a lot after I'm done here. So <laughs> um, let's see. To approve the sale of Swamp Lots parcels 6-1-23 and 6-1-32, with a minimum bid of $100 each with a deadline of November 20th at 2 p.m. Okay, you've heard the motion. The amendment has been approved, so the amendment is part of that motion. Any discussion on the motion as it was amended? Ready to vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say no, that's unanimous. The ayes have it then. Thank you very much. Anything else, Dave, on that matter? Anything we neglected? Oh, thank you. Covered it all there. A few times. <laughs> How about number eight then, Dave? Budget meeting dates. Have you been in touch with the budget committee? Yes. Um, what do they have to say? Well, we've got one of them here tonight, Jan and her cat. Um, I got to look at the emails now. I'm sort of spacing on this. I think everyone was good for Tuesdays and Wednesdays uh, in November and December. Um, I do know that we have usually have someone involved that likes to bowl on Tuesdays, so we would have to do PD on Wednesdays. I know that for a, a fact. 
Um, so it looks like we can move forward with the Tuesdays or Wednesdays, six o'clock, whichever night you guys so choose to do. So the only ones I can't do are the first Wednesdays of the month. Those are one of my nights. So could could you suggest dates um, or do you want to just, you want me to suggest dates? Um, so just, just to let you know, if you guys want to jot this down, um, Barry Varian is available except for his school board nights, which are November 4th, 18th. December 2nd and 16th. Um, so. So those are Wednesdays. Yeah, Jan is available anytime. And who was my other one? Oh, um, Anthony. Hold on. Um, he was. No, well, I can't find it now. Give me just one second. Um, He is available Tuesdays or Wednesdays. He cannot do the 9th or the 19th, but those are Mondays and Thursdays, so it should not matter. So um, looks like everyone is available on Tuesdays for every. Everyone, everyone? I believe oh. so. Well, you, you haven't polled the select board yet, but um, happily. I thought, I thought we did that at the last meeting with the select board. I had. This is what I sent to the budget committee members that we're getting close to budget season. We'd like to get a meeting scheduled together. The select board would like to do the Tuesday, Wednesday alternating meetings like we did last year. All the meetings would start at 6 p.m. and would be conducted them via Zoom. Can the three of you let me know your availability so I can get a schedule together? So you guys tell me. T Tuesdays are good for me now. My Regretfully, my course is not meeting anymore. So. What's the night that the uh, that the police w usually come? They usually come on Wednesdays, or they usually come on no, Tuesdays. No, Chris cannot do Tuesdays. He's bowling. Well, that's what I mean. So we don't have we don't have everybody. Everyone can do Tuesdays. Like just everybody, everyone. Not on the you guys in the budget committee. Yeah. Okay. I think that's why we alternated them last time. Well, how about, I'm going backwards because that's the way things are working. Uh, Barry's school board is, is December 2nd and 16th. Is that, yep. is that what you said? Hold All right, on. well, what if we do in December, what if we do the 9th and the 15th? The 9th is the Wednesday and the 15th is the Tuesday. Hold on. December 9th and 15th. Okay. And, then, and then why don't we pick a Tuesday, Wednesday in November, like the uh, 11th and 17th or something like that, maybe? Does that give you enough lead time? That's, you know, about two weeks out. It's about two weeks from now, Dave, the 11th. Oh, we, should, we should have something together to send out before then. Um, I know Jackie's been putting all the insurance numbers and stuff in, so um, yeah, we can do that. That's two weeks. We, we should be able to do something. That, that way we'll stay away from Thanksgiving week. So why don't we try for Wednesday the 11th at six o'clock, Tuesday the 17th of November at six o'clock, and then we'll have a, a break around Thanksgiving. And then again, Wednesday the 9th of December at six o'clock and Tuesday the 15th of December. Is that, the, is that a good four nights? Could we pick um, right now who we want to do the first night? That way we can get them on the, on the hook here. I think we, we've often uh, left that up to you, haven't we? No? I really don't remember. <laughs> um, okay, we'll figure it out. Maybe I'll have... If Chief's ready to go on the 11th, maybe we'll just get him out of the way. Does that work? I, I'm okay with the 11th. I'm just making you aware that you realize that's better in state, right? Than we do now. I mean, holidays and things have never stopped the board before, so I'm, I'm good with whatever. I'll be good with whatever date 
we we work out. I would, it would, if I could have a Tuesday free, that would be great. But if that doesn't work, we'll work with whatever dates are available. November 11th is a Wednesday, right? Yeah. Right. And I'm fine with meeting on Veterans Day as long as the board is good with that. Chris, did I understand you that you'd like to find a free Tuesday? Are there some Tuesdays that you don't vote? No, if I can have a Tuesday free, I have Mondays and Wednesdays for meetings after work. Um, so Tuesday is a good day for me to have free. But if that doesn't work, that's that's fine. We'll, no, I we'll work at whatever works. Yeah. Okay, so Dave, you know all the players and you know these dates and you will meet with all the department heads before they come to see us anyway. Uh, would you please just kind of organize it in the way that you have done pretty ably in the past. I, I know that one is, uh, you know, we have the small departments, you, you know how we do it. We try and put the small department items kind of mashed into one thing and have a special night for police and special night for highway. Doug Bailey's waving his hand. Yeah, I was, I think uh, when you and I talked last week, Seth, we, I, I mentioned this and I don't know if it can be done, but um, I think doing this on Zoom is going to be a little more challenging than when we sat around in the room. I, I would suggest that um, when we start each department, if the department head with along with Dave could, could present some general information, which I, I think are three things, um, a, a general department overview right at this time, um, current and future staff needs, and um, if there's new equipment needs in, in the year we're talking about from budget, or if they even see uh, equipment needs in the next couple of years, so that we have something in advance of starting the meeting. I, I don't know if that's possible, but that's my suggestion. Dave, does that sound like something that uh, the, town, the uh, department heads could consider? On, on future equipment needs? Well, the three things that he said, like overview of the department, equipment needs, staffing, like just kind of a, I guess stuff that probably you're aware of because of your role, but stuff that because we're one step removed, we probably are not aware of. Sure, and we can, yeah, I mean, we can narrow it down to as much as we can. Um, and I only say that because we have seemed to have had some great opportunities recently where grants are available that we get equipment from. So, you know, those are kind of above and beyond. So, which is great. Um, but yeah, we can do something. I mean, I think we usually try to do that anyway, serve an overview and where we're at and what our needs are. So I think Doug's idea was just so that the department heads don't feel at all like they're being put on the spot, but they're, you know, they're prepared. And if they can, you know, toss us a one page, you know, a few bullet points ahead of the meeting so that we're prepared and we're not just responding um, sure. on the for the moment, maybe that would lend to a better discussion all around and more profitable use of time. Yep, yep. That's great. Okay, anything, Tracy? Yeah, um, I just, six o'clock really doesn't work for me, but I'll be there when I can get there. Uh, does it make sense to consider a later time? I mean- No, no, just keep it at six. Um, like I said, I'll build a, I'll build a zoom in, but it, it, I might not be in till just before seven. I mean, is there a reason we're starting at six and not seven? I mean, um, seven, because these, these do take two hours usually. Like I think six to eight has been about the limit for most people. Like the yeah. social board regular meeting starts at seven and you know, we try eight o'clock, 8.30 to be done. But um, the budget meetings, it seems like we, especially if, if there's any, um, there's any questions or there's any public participation, which is always welcome. Um, but, you know, we get into pretty fine detail on, on these department budgets. And I, I mean, I'm, I'm good with that, but I just wanted to let you know, that's all. And there's probably a couple dates um, through November that I might not be able to make any, might not make anyways. Okay, well, Doug, Doug's saying something, but we didn't hear it. <laughs> yeah. Crazy to be hunting. <laughs> I figured there was some, something like that, right? 
that's okay. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll make it happen. It always happens. Anything else to be said? I do want to thank Jan and Tony and Barry uh, for serving on the budget committee. Some of them have been on the budget committee for five, six years, four or five years, six, seven years. I don't know. Jan, how many years have you been on the budget committee? You've been on, I think, probably the longest. Oh, you're muted, Jan. You're still muted. Hold up fingers. How many years? <laughs> Six years. <laughs> well, thank you for it. It's, it's uh, sometimes tedious, probably sometimes a little bit interesting, but you know, we try to make it enjoyable and we really do appreciate very much the budget committee's work at this. And we appreciate very much uh, when the public comes. We've had a number of members of the public who have come from time to time. So process we've done so far has we, worked well so i'm glad you haven't changed anything i think i think it does work i think it's one of those uh, if it isn't broke let's not fix it mm -hmm. yeah. all right thank you again thanks jim you're welcome how about the uh, fiscal affairs we have a couple of warrants to do tonight what's the pleasure of the board on the warrants i'll do it as like doing both at the same time Unless there's objection, yes, we can do it. I'd make a motion to approve uh, warrant October 26, $519,706.23, and also B, uh, Route 7 construction warrant in the amount of $209,189.36. We've heard the motion. Is there a second? Second from Doug Bailey. Is there a discussion or questions on any of the bills? Bailey's sitting back. That's a good sign. Is there, is there any discussion on any of the bills? Any questions? If not, ready to vote on them. All in favor of the two warrants as presented, say aye. 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 Any opposed, say no. That's unanimous. The ayes have it. Okay. So that's the end of the select board. We're going to recess the select board at 8.09. Tim, being on Zoom is another reason that the budget committee probably is best to start at 6 because, as we've discussed before, select board meetings are taking longer than they did when we were in person. Um, so I expect the budget committee may take a little longer than it used to, too, or the budget sessions, the budget workshops. So the select board's at recess at 8.09. I'll call the Brandon Board of Liquor Control Commissioners to order. Is there a motion on the agenda? So moved. Second. Mike Wyman moves to approve. Giles as a second. Any, any changes to be made? No. All in favor of the agenda as presented say aye. 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 It's unanimous. Is there a consent agenda motion to approve item two and item three? Yeah. There's a motion and a second from Wyman and Bailey. That means no discussion. All in favor of taking two and three as a consent agenda, say aye. 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 It's unanimous. All in favor of approval of the consent agenda, say aye. 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 It's unanimous. Item four. Motion, motion to. Brian Coolidge moves to adjourn. Is there a second? Aye. Tracy Wyman moves to second. That adjournment. That's not debatable. All in favor, say aye. 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 We're adjourned. Liquor Control Commissioners are adjourned at 8.10. I call to order the Brandon Board of Sewer Commissioners. Is there a motion regarding the agenda? Make that motion. Brian Coolidge moves to approve the agenda. Is there a second? Second. Tracy Wyman gives a second. Any changes to be made to the agenda? If not, all in favor of the agenda as posted, say aye. 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 Uh, item two, approval of the minutes of October 12th. This was the one that we had uh, Aldrich and Elliot make their presentation at. Make them move to approve from Brian Coolidge, second from Tracy Wyman, I think. Yep. Um, any changes, any errors or omissions in the minutes as presented? I might just Tim take Giles. the to compliment Charlene on capturing that really complicated discussion. Great job, Charlene. Yeah, thank you, Charlene. That boiled it down. Any errors or omissions in there? No, 
If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say no, that's unanimous. How about the consider wastewater treatment plant upgrade options? They've given us an option one and an option two with some funding and stuff like that and some comments on it. Dave, you wanna talk about this? Um, it's just really a recap of what was discussed at the last meeting and you guys had actually asked, um, can't remember it word for word, but if we could come up with sort of a summary and the fees associated with it based on you know, what we would be doing. So Wayne put together this little spreadsheet on the back that shows, you know, what the costs are for both um, option one and option two, where it would fall with rate increases quarterly and, you know, all of the, you know, estimated associated costs with it. So um, this, you know, this obviously the sooner we, the board determines what they want, um, Wayne can hunt down funding for this and we can get, um, stuff prep for a, a bond vote for March. So um, wanted to throw this out at you while it was still clean and fresh in your minds to see where we wanted to go. Clean and fresh, two words you wanna hear about wastewater, Dave. <laughs> so I wanna say thank you. I think that lining this up the way you did in the chart on the back is exactly what I was hoping to see. It made it very easy to understand and the comments below, uh, whether they're from you or from Aldrich and Elliot, doesn't matter, but uh, also helpful guidance. So um, anyone on the board want to offer up? Yeah, Tim. Yeah, I make a motion that we go with option two, um, mm -hmm. which is the more complete um, project. I second the motion. Is there discussion to choose option two versus option one? Option two, the two major differences were to install screening at the headworks and a third clarifying pool or lagoon or whatever the term is. Well, and I might um, say for the benefit of um, anybody who's on, who's not looking at the chart that we're looking at, um, that the quarterly um, increase to sewer rates for option two is around $40. Um, which I was pleased to see is only $10 more than option one, which was a less desirable uh, refurbishment of the system right or less complete anyway so um there's a motion to go with option two is there further discussion this will install screening at the headworks and a third clarifying pool all in favor of proceeding with option two say aye aye aye, aye. aye. that's unanimous now funding the two options are basically state funding or USDA uh, federal funding. What's the pleasure of the board? Are, are we supposed to choose that now or is this something that happens in the process of the project? Oh, I thought we were supposed to ask Wayne uh, or advise Wayne, but maybe you're right. Maybe Wayne's gonna advise us. Oh, Dave. Oh, so that's right. Right in that last paragraph, it does say with option two, the USDA funding package is more beneficial for the town. Um, we get 40% grant has a lower annual loan payment um, and increase in the sewer rates. So the USDA funding for two would be the, the lesser cost for the rate increases and yep. better funding options for us as well. Do you want us to choose now or are we supposed to? Um, uh, uh, yeah, because that would get the ball rolling for us to get the application in with USDA, and it is timely. I mean, they, they, we work well with them, but um, yeah, it would be good to have that. Then we all know we're on the same page. And weren't we going to have to have a positive bond vote, and we were shooting for town meeting or something? Shooting for March. And, yep. and those kinds of things, like the deadlines come up before we even realize it. Right. And, and Aldrich and Elliot will put if you remember when we did Champlain Street Pump Station, they put a pamphlet together that we sent out to the to all, to all the residents. Um, so, you know, there will be all the information with the funding on it and what the cost, total cost is to sewer users. Um, so it won't be a, they'll know ahead of time on what's going on with this. Okay, so I, I, I heard that as please choose a funding option. <laughs> I'll make a motion to use the USDA. Tracy moves to go with USDA funding for option two. Is there a second? 
Second from Brian Coolidge. Is there discussion? None heard. All in favor of pursuing USDA funding for option two, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Nope. That's unanimous. Item four. Motion to adjourn. Brian Coolidge moves to adjourn. Tracy Wyman seconded. It's not debatable. All in favor of adjourning, say aye. 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 Any opposed, say no. The ayes have it. Okay, so now we usually have other announcements or things of that nature um, before the select board goes back to select board and uh, an executive session. Anyone with anything to say to the group tonight? Um, just want to make sure everyone's aware of all of the, and I'm sure this is Butch is there, and maybe I'm stealing Butch's thunder. Uh, uh, all, all of the COVID money that we're desperately trying to hand out before the end of the year include a new round of economic recovery grants. The deadline is Friday at midnight. Um, if you haven't applied, you should apply. Um, they've really loosened the uh, well, so some of the regulations and in, in, in the uh, requirements around uh, your eligibility with that. So if you haven't checked, you need to check. If you have some unmet need, there's an opportunity there. And there's the technological assistance grants that are being run through Reddick, or I'm sorry, that's CEDAR, the Chamber and Economic Development of the Rutland Region. Uh, Tyler Richardson is the contact for that. Uh, but if you are a business owner, you know a business owner. And I see they just released actually more funding for helping with people that are working at home with the internet. Um, you know, a $40 uh, credit, it can be retroactive back to March uh, on your, off of your internet bill that's available for uh, anybody. So uh, make sure you're keeping an eye out. Bill, thank you for that. That's good info for all of the businesses. Anyone else? Announcements? Go to the order. Okay, if not, um, the board's gonna, select board will come back to order. It's 818.